second samuel chapter number 23 reading from verse number eight these are the names of the mighty men who david had joseph bashibeth the technomite chief among the captains he was called edo the ezenite because he had killed 800 men at one time verse 9 and after him was eliezer the son of dodo the whole height one of the three mighty men with david when they defiled the philistines who gathered there for battle the men of israel had retreated he arose and attacked the philistines until his hand was weary and his hand stuck to the sword we have read this many times so we're going to pause here amen take your seat amen are you ready for are you ready for god's word are you ready for god's word point number one if if death is to come to your house right now death it will death comes to your house and he says say one thing that should be the reason why i should allow you to continue to live on this earth what will you tell death like what are you doing that is so important on this earth that i shouldn't take you away what are you going to say <laughs> i'm not <laughs> that that's why i i began I'm, I'm really going to take my time and i prayed against the faces of the people Amen. So I'm not, I'm not really going to bother myself with how people's faces are. I'm just going to take my time. Because for, for the shouting and the aggression, there is, it's like a, a car with an ignition. I can switch it on even now. Yeah. What, what, are, you, what are you going to tell death? I'm, I'm giving you time to Okay, write it in your book. I'm going to inspect it. If you have a notepad or you have a pen, just write, I'm, I'm going to spend the next, say, three minutes to look at what you have written. Yeah. Then continue. Or I, or I, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I'm going to take my time. Today, you have to fasten your seatbelt. I'm going to really take my time. <laughs> what are you going to say? You see, if you are not sure what you are going to say, you are wasting your life. And you are actually a liability on humanity and the earth. You are wasting God's space. If you, I'm not saying two, one. That if, door, if, if death comes to my door right now, say, hey, young man, I'm here to take you away. But you have one thing to say. What do you think you are doing on this earth that I shouldn't take you away? If I'm not able, I'm not saying two or three, one. If you are not able to tell that, it means when you die, heaven will not be surprised at all. <laughs> you see, when people write gone too soon, what a shock. It is a shock to you. But to God, it's not a shock. <laughs> Amen. You see, I said it. It's good. Yeah. Today's message is not. I'm, I, and, I'm, and I'm not bothered. I'm going to take my time. Yeah. What are you going to say? If you can't say that, it means you, are, you don't have a calling. <laughs> if you cannot tell me this morning what you will tell death so that death will not take you away it means you don't have a calling you don't have a calling it means you don't have a ministry 
It means that your life is of no value. So any, anything has the right to take you away. Sicknesses, diseases, witches, wizards, necromancers, hydromancers, wicked men, lazy men, terrible men, unreasonable men, they all have the license to take you out because you possess nothing that the heaven should come to your defense. So without that one, you don't have a calling. Now, and let me help all those people here who by any chance will confuse the message. When we talk about calling, it's not preaching. When we talk about ministry, it is not laying hands on the sick. The calling or the ministry of your life is the intention and the purpose to which you were created. Now, if ministry is about preaching, then who did Abraham preach to? If ministry is about laying hands on the sick, who did Joseph pray for? The, the most confused item in charismatism is when we say somebody has ministry or somebody has a calling, all that they are waiting for is the next time they will hand the microphone to them. So without the possession or the holding of the microphone, many people think they don't have ministry. I'm suggesting to you, if ministry is holding the mic, where did Abraham hold the mic? If ministry is holding the mic, where did Joseph hold the mic? If ministry is holding the mic, where did Jacob hold the mic? If ministry is having a church, then what was the church of Gideon? If ministry is holding the mic, then Adam never had ministry. Because Adam never had a church, he never had a choir, and he never held the mic. So when we are talking about your calling, don't think that uh, oh, when we talk about calling, we are talking about apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. No, sir. They are there for a purpose. They are there for what? A purpose. That is not ministry. That is not your calling. All those agencies are supposed to train you for your ministry and your calling. Are you here? <laughs> so, preaching is the word of God in manifestation. Titus 1, the verse number 2. I'm going to take my time. Titus 1, the verse number 2. In hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. The next verse. Watch this now. But, at, but has in due time manifested his word through preaching. So preaching is just the word of God in manifestation. It's like your mobile phone. It's not the, your mobile phone is not the person that is calling on it. But your mobile phone is the manifestation of the person's communication to your life. But the mobile phone is not the person. But through the agency of the mobile phone, the person can talk to you. So preaching is not ministry. It is the agency through which God communicates his word. I want to kill that, that, thing, that myth should be killed before we even start. Because whenever people hear calling or ministry, the idea that comes to their mind is the person who is dressed in a suit and a tie and is called an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, a bishop, an archbishop, a, 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 a rev, right rev. No, 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 no. If that is the case, many people then will die without ministry. No. Joseph was living in his purpose even in prison. In prison. Joseph became a prime minister, so your ministry can be political. Daniel never had a church, but he advised about three kings in his lifetime. So Daniel, necess if we say prophet Daniel, it wasn't like people came to sit in the church like this and you'll be mentioning their names and their telephone numbers and after that collect a seed and drive a big car. No, but he was what? A political prophet. He 
understood the times and the seasons. He understood the economics that governs the world. He understood the principal forces that were governing nations. I think we've said enough. So, when I'm talking about ministry, don't think that oh, so for me, there may more time near the mainly the prayer and tea. No. You can be a doctor, a plumber, a carpenter, a, a, a physician, a, a, a police officer, a military officer, and still you are in what you're calling. Is that established? Is that established? Yes. So if you can't tell me one thing you are doing for death not to take you away, you, you don't have a calling. You don't. You don't. Se unti min chile adekodia potia oye no asasi suwa. En unti, eni kwa se owo fa o kwa. Uni ofre. Ene jume die biyansu on se onsa. Entu uwa. Enye nyame she. Now you know why witches can attack you now. You should know it by now. Every time we are praying for you, witches have come to take your life away and they have sent something from your hometown. It's an indication you don't have a calling. It's an indication. Now, number two. Your ministry, are we doing okay here? <laughs> your ministry or your calling is what you would do without pay. Your ministry or your calling is what you would do without what? Pay. Your ministry or your calling is what you would do without pay. So, there are a lot of doctors, that's not their calling. It's because they heard that if you're a doctor, you get money. But when you see somebody who is called by destiny as a doctor, if you put 10 surgeons, that particular surgeon will stand out. Why? Because he's not motivated by money. There is something inside him that connects him to what he's doing. It goes beyond the script or the money or, 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 or the payment whatever uh, transactions or arrangements they have made with the, with, with the hospital or in. So anytime you find people stri on strike, people chasing money it's an indication. They are not called. They are not called. In Second World War, do you know what the queen did? Second World War. The queen was on the front line. Do you know what she was doing? She was an ambulance mechanic. Google it. The queen of England, he was, she was an ambulance mechanic. Second World War. Google on your phone. Whatever you are doing that you can do cheerfully without pay, that's your calling. Number three. Number three. You don't need motivation to work in your calling. Taking our time. You don't need what? Motivation to do what? To work in what? You're calling. If we have to motivate you to preach, it's not your calling. If we have to motivate you to pray, it's not your calling. If we have to motivate you to love your wife, it's not your calling. Come on. If you have to go to a marriage seminar, before you can love your wife, it means that, let's leave that one. Let's leave that one. <laughs> Anything that you are called to do, you don't need motivation. We, 
We are in the introduction. We are in the Anything you are called to do, you don't need motivation. Ah, say Oba Awone back. We have to motivate the woman to breastfeed their child. Have you seen some before? Your garden he passes. One to him now in ginger my wife said the bear or beman crown no for. Are you okay at all? So anything that you have to be motivated to do, it's not your calling, it's your work. I was in a church. A young pastor came there at that time. The first question he asked, I said, how much are you saying? <laughs> That's the first question. How much are you saying? The first question he asked. How much are you paid here? <laughs> Motivation. So if you have to be motivated to come to church, you are not a Christian. You are not. If you have to be motivated to read your Bible, you don't know God. If you have to be motivated to pray, you have not yet discovered Christ. Anything that you need an external force to cause you to operate in it, it means you are not in charge. Now, I'm going to repeat. Anything that demands an external force to cause that thing to operate means that the thing in operation is not in charge. For example, there is no car that starts on its own until somebody presses it. So no matter how sophisticated the car is, the car is not in control. The car will need a driver to move it. Now, the very moment you become a car, it means something will have to drive you. If that thing decides not to drive you, you'll be at the same place. That is why many people, 10 years, 15, 16, 17, 20 years of coming to church, they are the car of their life has been parked at one place. It has never moved. Because, because whatever you are called to do, you don't need an external force to motivate you. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Then I said, Jeremiah was angry here. The church members were misbehaving. Watch what he said. said then I said, I, I will not mention, make mention of him. He's talking about God. Nor speak any more in his name. He decided he won't preach anymore. This is Jeremiah. Now watch the next. The next. said, but his word was in my heart. His word was in my heart like what? Burning fire. Shut up in my bones. It means that whatever you are called to do, the calling itself is the motivation. I'm going to repeat. Whatever you are called to do, the calling itself is the motivation. Now, he decided not to speak the word, but the word inside him became like what? Fire. It means that I can even decide I'm not coming to church anymore, but there is something inside me that will motivate me to come. I don't know it. It, it means that it means according to my feeling, I'm not coming. According to my feeling, I'm not praying. But the spirit of prayer inside me is shut up like fire in my bones. It means that if you truly possess the anointing, you don't need an external force. Even when you decide not to preach, the anointing of preaching will begin to cause fire in your system. Even if you decide not to pray, the anointing to pray will cause fire in your system. Even if you decide not to be a Christian, there is something inside you that will begin to speak. Ah, I'm not coming again. Last time I didn't like how the preacher preached. Last time I didn't like how the ushers treated me. But there is something inside. Jeremiah said, I said to myself, I will not preach in your name again. I'm not going to be a preacher anymore. But the word inside became fire. It means that when you are called, the thing inside you will become fire. It means when you are called, even when men don't recognize it, the thing itself will begin to motivate you. I'm not preaching because people are going to start clapping. There is something inside even when i sit and i'm watching tv it's burning ah when i walk on the street it's burning when i sleep it's burning until you get to that point you have not yet discovered your calling
So for any in so cry and a bomb pie. Are you serious? Say office and also same in crime. Now we go reading the Bible. Last week I bought 25 books. 25. At a go. Oh, do you know selfies on? And you tell that they are making pictures. It is shut up in my bones. There is something inside that's working. You don't need anybody looking for external motivation. You don't know your calling. You don't know your calling. You know. Or say a meeting at a certain time. Say say open so you be a bra five. Who need more calling? Anywhere you see loss is an indication that people are lawless. Yes, some ramam ratu for. That's what the scripture says. So anyway, over coffee and fans and cafe way and fans and say no. Who do if you are not saying crab money if you are not. So the more the loss, the more wicked the people. In places like Denmark, sometimes the prisons are empty. A common no be a no be a kuyo be a de. What prison have Wi-Fi da? In Denmark, Sweden, yes, Scandinavia. Check it. There are prisons with Wi-Fi. It's the only again in our corner. You be able to move from prison. You'll be you'll be more comfortable. Motivation. That's the problem of many people. You have to be motivated to wake up in the morning to pray. Sure. When I look at the vision of prayer hub, I can't even sleep. Say, Madame and I abroso. It's a lie. Odam and Abrosua, one or that down. It means you don't possess a calling. I'm telling you. Who has an appointment with an American embassy that will oversleep? Say, a family is my dad, bro. You are not serious. Me, my lamb say, four. Four. Two on the iPad, two on my phone. You are not motivated. Self motivation. While I'm not sad, I can't say I'm passing. I'm not sad, I can't say. Put me crowd token and we'll be a lamb no be set here. You don't you see motivation is inside. Tamila Sina Katias. I'm not preaching because the chairs are full. I'm, I'm preaching because there's something burning. And when you keep it burning, people will come and see you on fire. That's the secret. When you keep it burning, people will come and see you burning. That's it. Continue. Take our time. Let's continue. Many people will have a ministry they will never fulfill. Colossians 4.17. Put it on the board. Many people. He mentioned somebody specifically in the church in Colossae. His name is Archippus. He said, and said to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. So you can receive and not fulfill. Take heed to the ministry you have received in the Lord and fulfill it. So you can receive something and still not fulfill. So you can receive the calling as an international apostle and die as an usher. You can receive the calling as a great man and die as a pauper. The fact that you did not fulfill does not change the calling. So Paul is telling an Archippus here that you have received something.
but make sure he didn't say i will help you he said make sure you fulfill it you make sure it means the fulfillment is not on paul it's on Atipus. You can receive it and not fulfill it. You can receive it and not fulfill it. And many people are receiving without fulfilling. So Paul mentioned one person in the entire church in Colossae and said, Atipus, make sure that the ministry you have received, you don't die without fulfilling it. You have received it, but make sure you fulfill it. This morning, I pray for somebody here that you will not receive and throw it away. I said you will not receive and throw it away. This morning, whatever God, if it is prayer, you will fulfill it. If it is power, you will fulfill it. If it is wealth, you will fulfill it. Shout yes. Fulfill it. Can receive it and not fulfill it. And receive it and not fulfill it. When you walk in the fulfillment of your ministry, you don't need external help. <laughs> John 4 34. John 4 34. Jesus said to them, My food. <laughs> A lot of you think that food is the one your wife gives you in the kitchen. The reason why you can be dressed like the way I'm dressed and still feel empty is that whatever you buy from the shop covers your body, but your soul can be naked. I'm going to repeat that. Whatever you buy from the shop covers your body. It doesn't cover your soul. So you can be dressed in a suit and a tie and your soul has no even panties on. It's total nakedness. You, 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 you can wear the most expensive jewelry but that expensive jewelry does not affect your spirit. That expensive jewelry does not affect your soul. So many people are buying things to cover their body whilst their spirit and soul walk naked. Many people, listen, any food that you like best does not feed your spirit. Any best meal, Ghana jollof with Ghana salad, with fried chicken or grilled chicken, all your favorite foods does not affect your spirit. It does not affect your soul. Every favorite thing from pizza to coke to kelawale to awiesu to puff puff to banku to diehuo to queen queen to chinkafa to wache panasima ntaya katia pan, to nuhu to eto all those things they do not affect your soul or spirit shout a very big amen here shout a very big amen here so if you spend your entire life investing in the best watches spot and you do not know what is satisfying to your spirit there are some people they will never show you any message that has blessed their spirit but they will come and show you the best pizza in accra may the lord forgive us as uh, it's easy i said may the lord forgive us jesus said my food is to do the will of my father it means when you are in the will of your father you are actually eating spiritual food what does it mean if the will of the father is for me to come on sunday and pray and preach it means whilst i'm praying and preaching my soul is being filled so you can come to church and still walk outside the will of god because all the things god designed for that day you did none of it so you are going home empty you are going to your workplace on monday empty you are going to tuesday empty you are going to wednesday empty but when i do the will of the father my spirit is being filled as i sing i'm being filled as i lift up my hands i'm being filled as i pray i'm being filled as i preach i'm being
be filled as I evangelize and be filled Jesus said my food I pray today your food will be the food of God the will of God will become your food it means as I eat it I'm empowered to do more as I pray I'm empowered to do more as I preach I'm empowered to do more as I fast I'm empowered to do more the food I eat is the will of the father many people are eating the will of their dreams they are eating the will of their visions that is why they are empty they drive the fastest car but their destiny is not fast they live in the best houses but they are still naked in the eyes of the devil but this morning I'm looking for those who will see their will of the father as their food shout the will of the father is my food shout the will of the father is my food When we eat the will, yeah, now, let me even make it worse. Normally, normally, when people die, I like prophetic drama. Normally, when people die, the will, if they had a will, will be written on a sheet of paper. Two of us. Two of us. How many of you, when you were in nursery, you ate paper before? Lift your hands. Don't be that shy. Now, this is it. If the will is on a sheet of paper, somebody can change it because if it is printable, it is doable. Now, what this scenario means is this when i was handed over the will to my destiny i did not keep it in the shelf so when you see me and you ask how do you know you are going to be rich i don't have the paper it's inside <laughs> i'm eating the will to the point that the will becomes part of my kidneys the world becomes part of my heart. So as my heart is pumping blood, it's pumping the will. At my own. That is what it means. An eating will cannot be stolen. Kimasia. An eating will cannot be stolen. An eating will cannot be changed. Many people are holding their will. When I eat it, it means when I speak. We on the pan paint the chili. When I dear Ben Kwinda, when you eat a you don't need to go and tell anybody. As you begin to speak, the Aben Kwin is following everywhere. When you eat the will of God, any time you speak, the will is following everywhere. I know I'm gonna be rich. How the will is following the word. Why? Because the will is not in my head, the will is not on a paper, the will is the will is my healiness, my breakthrough, my anointing. That's a secret. Many people are holding their will. It is the will. Tanimasia. The Bible says, son of man, eat the scroll. Eat what? The scroll. Maybe if you man, be It's in the Bible. Son of man, eat the scroll. It means eat the book. I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. See, many of you, is when they call the pastor for the verse or the chapter, it means they have a preaching appointment. <laughs> when you see Christians calling pastor, pastor, uh, last week you were saying, can you send me the verse and the chapter? Either they are in an argument or they are going to lead prayer in their workplace. 
imagine the devil has come to your house to attack you. Then the devil quoted, for it is written. Then you tell the devil, wait, let me call my pastor. Last week. So many of you have mysteries in your notepad. But mysteries do not perform on paper. They perform on spirit. Mysteries don't perform on paper. They perform on spirit. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are what? Life. So, how many of you know I'm preaching this morning? You see, we have the Pharisees, we have the Sadducees, and we have what? The scribes. Who are the Pharisees? More spiritual than everybody. Who are the Sadducees? They don't really believe in so many supernatural things. Who are the scribes? Those who come to church and their pen is longer than if you say, oh, oh, they will write. However, when they leave the place, there is nothing in their spirit. The word of God is not to be written. It is to be written and chewed. <laughs> Elasia. He said, Ezekiel 3 verse 1. Watch this. He said, Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this crow. Eat it. Eat it. Seven authors. Look at the revelation. First day, seven pages. I tell people that someday you are going to preach. They are scared. But from January to this time, we have not preached less than 30 messages. But right now, if, if I tell you someday you are preaching, some of you will collapse and faint. Eat the scroll. Continue, let's continue. <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> we have now come to the development. Development one. You are supposed to become whatever you receive. Is the code. You are supposed to become whatever you receive. Genesis 12, verse 2 and 3. He said, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you, shall bless you. Shout, I will bless you. Say like you have, shout, I will bless you. Shout it again, I will bless you. Then he said, and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Say, you shall be a blessing. I can't say, you shall be a blessing. So at one point he said, I will bless you. Then following it, he said, you shall be a blessing. There's a difference. I will bless you. Means you receive the blessing. You shall be a blessing. Means you will become the blessing. Stand up. Let me show you something. The reason why many of us will enter heaven with zero accounts because, because, because what 
whatever God gives you is not accounted to you. Come on now. Today we have to borrow about 20 more minutes. I'm going to finish this thing. I'm not, yeah, but I feel we have to borrow about 10, 20. Let me repeat what I just said. Whatever is given to you cannot be accounted to you. For example, if I give this man money, this money, if we are doing the accounts, it left me to him. In the kingdom, the Bible says it is more blessing to give than to receive. So it means that on the scale of giving and receiving, the people that receive are of a lesser blessing than those that are given. Because any time I give, it is accounted to me as credit. Any time you receive, it is accounted to you as debit. My goodness. So, if God gave you life, it is a debit. So at the end of the day, you give him accounts. Judgment is not about chasing people's wife. Oh. No. That one, why you not? Just say, oh, oh. <laughs> why you No. In the kingdom, whatever you receive is debit. But whatever you give is credit. Give and you shall receive. So the only way to receive in the kingdom is giving. Listen now. Listen now. Watch this. Listen now. So the level of your reception now, I can know it by the level of your giving. Said give and you shall receive. So giving comes before reception. You can never expect to receive if you have not given. And the charismatic prophetic church has taught people to be receivers and not givers. But anything that is given to you is on, is, is on credit basis. Yet they are far more. Unquan yet they are far more. Wahuante yet they are far more. Se ahuantena yet they are far more no. Se wuye wajini sa wadi ahuantena be pe ma. At the end of the day, the one that gave that life to you will require accounts. Because so it means hell will be a place of wasters. Not necessarily wicked people, but wasters. Whatever you give is accounted to you as credit. He said, press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men what? Give. But before men will give, you should have given first. So whatever you receive is debit. But it is what you give. So when God said to Abraham, I will bless you, that blessing in Abraham's life is actually on credit or the blessing God has given Abraham is not accounted to him. It is actually debited from him. The only time that account will be credited to Abraham is when Abraham moves from just receiving to becoming what he received. What does it mean? If Abraham received a blessing from God, the only time God will begin to count it on the account of Abraham is when Abraham becomes a blessing to others. So if you receive and the reception remains with you, Odeka, many people are not owing the devil, they are owing God because what God gave them, they sat on it and the blessing never made them a blessing to another. God, 
So God, uh, God, God gave me the intensity to pray. The only time that intensity of prayer is accredited and accounted to Alexander Mankwa is when my prayer was able to pull somebody from the pit and set him on the higher grounds. So until that thing God has given to me becomes me, I have failed. So if God gives you a blessing, he expects you to become the blessing. He expects you to become the blessing. He said, I will bless you and you shall become or you shall be what? A blessing. Everything God gives to you, you must become. Everything. 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 Are you ready? Everything. 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 Isaiah 61. Everything God gives to you, you must become. Can you repeat it? Everything God gives to me, I must become. Can you say it again? Everything that God gives to me, I must become. Say it again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has what? 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 It means Jesus received his anointing. So at this point, he was called Jesus. But to become the Christ is a process. I'm going to take my time. I, I'm not going to mind anybody. Just, I'm, I'm just going to be here. Take my time. He was born Jesus. But he was not born the Christ. Because the name Christ is not a name, it's a title. That is why we have Antichrist. That is the opposite title of Christ. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed. It means I have received the anointing. So Jesus. <laughs> Let me take my time. In Luke 4. Reading from verse 16. Are you, are you following this morning? Let me show you something. Go to 18. Let me see something. Let's jump to 18. Yes. Watch this verse. Watch this verse. Jesus comes with the same verse from Isaiah 61. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? He was trying to tell his audience what he had received from God. Are you okay? I, I can't hear you. Are you okay? Now, Matthew 16, verse 16. Matthew 16, 16. Matthew 16, 16. If we read from the previous verses, from 14, for example, he's, he's asking them, who do men say that I am? And they said, see, Jesus who? So, I'm not saying Jesus Christ. I'm saying Jesus. I want you to follow me Why I'm saying Jesus and not Jesus Christ. Now, He, at this point, he had done a lot of miracles. So, he wanted to find out what they knew about him. Now, watch this. He said, so they said, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. And others, Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. 
Was Jesus a prophet? Yes. But was that the answer he was looking for? No. What answer was he looking for? Next verse. He said unto them, But who do you say that I am? So it means the answers they gave were all wrong what? Answers. I pray this morning that when you stand before God, any question you pose to you will not give wrong answers. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Simon answered and said, watch, watch the board. Watch the board carefully. He said, you are the Christ. So, when Jesus was asking his disciples, who do men say that I am? He was not asking because he had forgotten his name, Jesus. The question was not to Jesus, so no. Because it was Jesus speaking to them. He was looking for something else. And that thing could only be identified by divine revelation. And the revelation is not Jesus. The revelation is not a Christ. The definite article, the Christ. So when Peter said, thou art the Christ. And he said, the son of the living God. What Jesus was looking for was that he was the Christ. Now, what he he ma me nchira o to to ensem hunu na ya cheche oni ahoma so tugu ne sua na ma papa. I'm telling you something here. Listen. Listen carefully. Listen. Many people have been saying the name Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus. But in true in true sense his name is not Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus the Christ. There's a reason. Now, if you have done a little bit of reading, there is a period in theology called intertestamental period. It's a big word. Let me make it simple. The distance between the Old Testament and the New Testament is about 400 years of silence. So from Malachi to Matthew, we don't, how many of you know what happened between Malachi and Matthew? At least about close to 25 or 30 people came between the last chapter of Malachi to we started writing the book or the, the gospel of Matthew claiming that they were the Christ. Even in the time of Jesus, there were people claiming at that time that they were the Christ. So between the Old and the New Testament, you have 400 years of silence. We don't know what happened. Many people were making claim. But Jesus became the Christ by what? The pronouncement of revelation. So what is the man of God saying? What is the man of God saying? He received the anointing in Isaiah 61. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. He became the anointing in Matthew 16, 16. There's a difference. Now, in Isaiah 61, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. In Matthew 16, 16, the word the Christ is the word Christos, which simply means the anointed one and his anointed. The Hebrew version is Hamashiach, which means what? The anointed one. So, in Isaiah 61 and Luke 4 verse 18, he received the anointing. In Matthew 16 verse 16, he became the anointing. That is why you are not called Jesus. You are called a Christian because you cannot duplicate Jesus. No, but you can duplicate Christ. That is why our name is not Jesus. We are called what? Christians. We are named after the title Christ, not after Jesus. Don't clap, don't clap. Because of time. Let's work this. So, there is even somebody called Bad Jesus. Do you know? Ah, now, eh, yeah, baby, I need to get a comment from the coffee. Yes, oh, yeah, we are near my team. Because you better do what to yes, but only Christo. There's a difference. You can be the Jesus. But not the Christ. Mm. 
There's a clear distinction between Jesus and Christ. So when you were saying, who do men say that I am? His name was already Jesus. So why did they not say Jesus? Now if I ask you, what's my name? Alexander. And I say no. So who do men say that I am? What was he looking for? He was not looking for his name. He was looking for his calling. Men can know your name. But men must know you after your calling, not your name. John is called John. Is he the only one called John? Is he the only one called John? There was a disciple of Jesus too called John. But when you say John death, Baptist, you are describing the ministry. So, if you are Kasim. Until there is Kasim death, do, 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 you have never seen your calling. Let me make it. Let me make it simpler. Let me make it simpler. Ma, 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 Right now, there are pictures in everybody's mind, true or false. When I say Messi, there are pictures in everybody's mind, true or false. When I say Azuma Nelson, there are pictures in everybody's mind. When I say Listowell, what picture comes to your mind? If there is no picture, it means you are just existing. Now, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. See a boat, dinner picture, be a man. It means you don't have an identity spiritually. When I say Azuma Nelson, what picture comes to mind? When I say Messi, what picture comes to mind? When I say Mandela, what picture comes to mind? So when we mention your name and there is no picture, it is what the seven sons of Skiba experience. They said, for Jesus we know, for Paul we know, who are you? Was he, I, they were seven old, but he made all of them one. This is English grammar. He said to all the seven, who? So even if you put all of them together, they still don't have an identity. There are many people walking without identity. So when Jesus was asking them, who am I? He was not asking about his name. He was asking about his purpose, his calling, and his identity. His purpose and his calling and identity is not Jesus. That is why it is after his resurrection that that name became great. For he has been given a name. It is the Christ that made the name Jesus powerful. If you take the Christ out, it's Kofi Yesu. Anybody can be called that name. So whatever you receive from God, you must become. He received the anointing and he became the anointing. Whatever you receive from God, you must become. Abraham received the blessing and he became the blessing. Joseph had dreams. But until Joseph became the dream in Egypt. Now, Pharaoh said, who amongst the men is wiser than you? It means that all that Pharaoh dreamed on his bed was to locate Joseph. So, Joseph had a dream in his father's house, but he became the dream in Pharaoh's palace. I'm going to repeat. Joseph had a dream in his father's house, but he became the dream in Pharaoh's palace. Many people have dreams, but until you become the dream, you will keep dreaming. Now, when he gave the solution, Pharaoh said, who amongst my men is wiser like you? So it means all the dream Pharaoh had was to locate Joseph. That was all. So, at the end of the day, if you are mathematical, the dream of Pharaoh is equal to the interpretation and the solution. And when you draw the interpretation and the solution with an equal sign, it becomes Joseph. So, the dream of Pharaoh at the other side of the equation became a human being. Until dreams take human forms, they will remain in the abstract and nothing will happen. Many people have dreams in their minds. 
but until the dream walks with a suit and a tie, the dream will only become a vision of the night. For it to become a reality of the day, the one dreaming must become the dream. Jesus Christ came and said, Ah, I bring you bread that when you eat, you shall never be hungry again. But as he progressed, he said, I am the bread. So what he came to give, he became. Anytime God gives you something, you must become. He came as the bread. He came to give bread. But at the end of his life, he said, I am the bread. So if God gives me prayer, at the end of my life, I should become the answer to somebody's prayer. You are not here. If God gives you an anointing, you must get to a point that you become the anointing to somebody. If God gives you money, it should come to a point. When the person enters an office, he doesn't need money. He will say, I am the brother of Prince. I am the brother of Prince Reme And that name alone carries the same equivalent of the bride. The first person who came before him came with. It means you have not only received money from God, you have become money to others. So it means that when God gives you money, it must get to a point when I walk into an office and you are not with me and I have no money. When I mention your name, whatever I am looking for, that money would have given to me. Your name must give it to me. That is why the Bible says a good name is higher than riches. A good name is better than riches. So a name is a currency. Your name is what? A currency. But what makes your name great is converting from being blessed to becoming the blessing. Esther. Everybody talks about it. Now listen. She received favor. But the favor was to, him, was to her alone. When Esther became queen, who benefited? Nobody. It was until Esther became the favor in the palace of the king that Israel was preserved. So, if he received the favor and remained with the favor, the whole Israel would have died. But he became the favor in the eyes of the king. So, when you receive favor, you must become the favor of your family. When you receive breakthrough, you must become the breakthrough of your family. She received favor. But at the end of her life, she became the favor. That when the king looked at her, she said, ah, what do you even want? To the half of my kingdom, say it. So she had not received favor. She had become favor. 